Welcome back, I'm George, and in this video, I'm going to show you some iOS 26 settings you need to turn off as soon as possible to make the most out of your phone. We are going to cover privacy settings, connectivity and optimization settings, and of course, some very interesting battery tips that actually make a difference in your battery life. Now, that being said, and without further ado, Let's begin with the first setting you may consider turning off on iOS 26. As many of you know, with this new operative system, we got the new liquid glass, which makes everything a little shinier and, well, arguably it makes things look cooler. The problem is that as you can see right here, and as you'll see now more clearly when I show you, there we go, the, the search bar, we have some readability issues with this new operative system. But fortunately, there is a very fast way to fix any readability issues with iOS 26. You want to come to the settings, then you want to swipe down to accessibility, then you want to tap on display and text size, and then you want to tap on reduce transparency. And as you'll see, from now on, there will be no more transparencies on your phone, so all of the textures are going to be way easier to read. As you can see, there's no more readability issues in any part of the OS as it was the case before with liquid glass. Now you should keep in mind that this is going to get rid of all transparencies, which can also be a little boring and make the OS flat, but at least it is going to be functional and you won't have any issues. Now, that being said, and moving on, this would be for people that have the new camera control button on their iPhone, because as many of you know, with well this new camera control button, we have some functionality issues. There is this little contextual menu that gets triggered accidentally all the time when you're grabbing or gripping the phone with a little too extra strength. But don't worry, because with iOS 26, there is a very easy fix. You want to come to the settings, you want to swipe down to camera, then tap on camera control, and then you can disable the camera adjustments. So that way you can still tap to open the camera, tap to take a picture, but you won't accidentally trigger the contextual menu that I showed you before. Now, that being said, if you like the camera adjustments option, but you are not a fan of the accidental triggers, you can also tap on customize and turn off the light press. That way you won't be able to turn on the contextual menu by pressing on the button. You will have to swipe, which is something that's harder to do accidentally. Now that being said and moving on, let's tap on the settings. Let's swipe down to general. Let's tap on software update. And right here on automatic updates, I suggest you turn the feature off. Now, this is not something that I would have recommended two, three years ago, but lately Apple has been slacking and releasing some software updates with bugs, with issues, and very poorly optimized. So generally, once again, I would not suggest you turn this off, but as of lately, I think it is a good idea. You want to not automatically install updates and just wait to see if it runs properly before you install. Now, next up, also here on the settings app, I want you to swipe down to cellular and then swipe down once again to iCloud backup because for some reason this is turned on by default, but I highly suggest you turn it off. You don't want to be downloading and creating iCloud backups that are gigabytes and gigabytes with your cellular plan. I mean, I'm pretty sure some of you have unlimited plans, but if you don't, you ideally want to turn this off and even if you have an unlimited plan, doing it over cellular is going to burn a lot more battery life, which is not great. Now, also here on the cellular section, I want you to swipe all the way up, tap right here on cellular data options, and ideally right here on voice and data, you want to enable the 4G option. And I know this may be controversial because 5G is better than 4G, but you'll find out that most of the time, the difference in speed is not that big, but the difference in battery consumption is actually pretty noticeable. So I believe 4G is more than enough. It is going to give you really fast internet for most of the things you do, and it is going to burn less battery life. Now also here on the settings, and as a great way to save battery life, 
If you swipe down to general and you swipe down again to background app refresh, you'll see a very long list with every app that has the ability to update in the background. And well, as you can probably guess, for an app to update in the background, it needs to be opened, it needs to be connected to the internet, it needs to be fetching data from the servers, and that burns a lot of battery life. So the least amount of apps that are turned on on this list, the more battery life you'll have. Ideally, you want to take a close look and just enable the ones you need. In my case, I don't need the App Store, I don't need Books, I don't need Freedom, I don't need GarageBand, I don't need Journal, I don't need Keynote. There are many of these apps, in fact, and these are just the default ones that come with the iPhone, I don't really need to have turned on. I maybe just need my messaging apps, maybe the browser, maybe some services, but everything else I can just turn off. But anyways, that being said, and before we move on, I actually have something for you watching this video. Okay, so a lot of you know me from this channel, whether it is in front of the camera or back there in the top-down shot, but right now I'm actually building a new channel that's a little bit more ambitious where I will be needing some extra help. More specifically, I'm looking for a co-host to be in front of the camera with me and I'm looking for a videographer to shoot the videos. So if by any chance you're interested in being a co-host on a YouTube channel or you are a videographer, send me an email to this address so we can talk. But anyways, that being said, let's get back to iOS 26 because there is a lot more to cover. Let's tap on settings. Let's now swipe down to display and brightness. There we go. And let's now swipe down to always on display. Now this won't be a feature on every iPhone. You need to have an iPhone with ProMotion, which would be the iPhone 14 Pro, 15 Pro, 16 Pro, 17 Pro, or the new iPhone 17. If you have the option, you want to tap right here. You want to turn it on, which will be the case by default, I'm pretty sure, on most of your phones. And then you want to disable this three options right here. Show wallpaper, blur wallpaper photo, and show notifications. Now for reference, if they are turned off, the always on display is going to look like this. And if they are turned on, the always on display is going to look like this. Now, as you can see, we have uh, the wallpaper showing, even though it's a little darker and the time is maybe a little bit more visible. This is why it is going to burn more battery life. But as I said, in my opinion, the whole point of the always on display is that you can quickly glance at the time. If you need anything else, you can just tap on it and it's going to turn on. So I believe that turning off these options is the perfect middle ground because you can still check the time without turning on the phone, but you won't be burning pretty much any battery life in the process. But anyways, that being said, let's get back here to the main settings page and swipe down to the face ID and passcode settings. As you can see, it is going to ask for your password. And once you're here, the first thing you need to do is to swipe down right here and disable expire previous passcode now. Because this feature is essentially going to let you use your old password and your new password to unlock the iPhone, which as many of you can agree, is not the safest thing in the world. So as you can see, let's change the password. In my case, it is 111111. Let's change it to 2222222. Use anyway. 2222222. It is just for a demo, of course. Don't use this week of a password. As you can see, for the next 71 hours and 59 minutes, my previous passcode can be used to reset the iPhone if I forget the new password, which is extremely dangerous because if you change it, it's likely because someone you don't really trust knows your current password and you want to replace it. So the old one being available is kind of a security breach. Ideally, you want to tap right here and then you want to tap on expire now and automatically you'll only be able to use the new one to unlock or reset the device. Now that being said, and also here on the face ID and passcode settings, down below you'll find some very interesting options for your safety. More specifically, the allow access when locked settings. First of all, as you can see, we can allow for the today view and search to be available when the phone is locked. So as you can see, the phone is locked and we can still 
will browse any app that's available on the phone and of course not launch it, but see if it's there. And well, if we swipe from the left, you'll see that we get access to the Today View with all of our widgets, which may include our location, our photos, and sensitive data from any other widget you have. And well, of course, you can do whatever you want, but I highly suggest you turn this off. It is going to let other people see a lot of information about your phone and the things you have on it. Now, a little bit below, we have the option to show the notification center when locked. So as you can see, even though it is locked, we can still swipe down to access all of the notifications on the phone. In this case, it would show any notifications from your messages, any notifications from your bank, any anything that is a notification is going to be seen by anybody that can touch your phone. Of course, once again, you can do whatever you want, but I highly suggest you turn it off. Now, this is going to be the case also with the control center. So people will be able to access your control center and change the brightness, change the volume, change your connections without the phone being unlocked. In this case, I don't think it is that big of a deal in terms of safety, but I also turn it off because I can just automatically unlock the phone and access the control center anyways. Now, a little bit below, we have lock screen widgets and live activities, which in this case would show up right here at the bottom. It would be whatever widgets you have on the lock screen. And well, in this case, I don't think it is that big of a deal since it is generally going to be well calorie information or weather information, unless you have some, some very sensitive data on the lock screen, I think it's fine. Now, that being said, the one feature that I highly, highly suggest you turn off is Siri, because if this is turned on, anybody that has access to your phone, even though it is locked, will have access to your Siri and it will be able to ask it questions. Of course, the version of Siri when the phone is locked is not the same as the full version when you have the phone unlocked, but still, there's been actually times with previous iOS versions where people used Siri on the lock screen to bypass the security code and access the entire phone. And that can actually happen again with a future software update. So yeah, I highly, highly suggest you turn this off. Now, of course, I also suggest you turn off reply with message because you don't want people that don't have access to your phone replying to your messages. And well, if you use HomeKit and you have a smart home, I also highly, highly suggest you turn this off because if it is turned on, anybody that has access to your phone can open your garage door, open your blinds, turn on your whatever, it is kind of a security breach to your entire house if you have this on. And well, if you want to be extra safe, you can also turn off return missed calls and workout health data. Although I actually suggest you turn this on because most of the time you're working out, the phone is going to be locked, but you still want to gather that health data. And well, something that is also very interesting and very dangerous is this option right here, erase data. Now, by default, this is going to be turned off and I suggest you leave it turned off because when you turn it on, after 10 failed passcode attempts, the phone is automatically going to delete all the data on the device, completely shut down, block itself, delete all the data and go back to, well, the setup menu you had when you first set up the iPhone. Now, this may be useful if you have a lot of sensitive data on your device and it is better to delete that data than for others to access it, so to say. But if you're a normal person, I suggest you leave it off just in case because maybe one friend of yours is trying to prank you by tapping the wrong password and boom, automatically all of your data is gone. But anyways, that being said and moving on, now I actually want to show you two quick settings to make your videos and photos look better. First of all, you want to swipe down to camera, then tap right here on record video, and then you want to swipe down and disable HDR video. This is going to make your videos look more professional and closer to what you can see with a professional camera. And then you want to come back to the main camera menu and swipe down to this option right here, prioritize faster shooting you want to turn this off so you can take better looking images. Now, when you turn it on, it is going to make your photo taking experience a little bit faster, but that is going to come at a cost, which is image quality. 
In my opinion, when you turn this off, you can still get a very fast photo taking experience and you don't lose any quality. So I think it's better to turn it off. But anyways, that being said, back once again here to the main settings page, let's now swipe down to general and then swipe down once again to keyboard. Right here, you can actually select whether you want haptic feedback or sound or both. In this case, I cannot suggest you turn on or off any of these options because it is a matter of personal preference. In my case, I actually turn both off because I don't like the feedback from the keyboard. But I highly suggest right here on all keyboards, you turn off auto corrections because I'm pretty sure if this option is turned on on your iPhone, more than once you were trying to type a specific word and the iPhone auto corrected it to a different word, making you have to delete the entire word and start over again and it made the experience pretty annoying. I always turn it off on my iPhone. Now, something you should also know is that by default on the iPhone keyboard, you have this predictive options right here at the top, but you can always come back to the settings and turn off predictive text. So the keyboard doesn't have those options and it takes a little bit less space. But anyways, that being said, and once again here on the main settings page, let's now swipe all the way down to a fan favorite section on the iPhone privacy and security. The first thing you want to do here is tap on location services and make sure that no apps have always enabled. As you can see, it is not going to be an option on first party apps. There's not an always uh, option, but you'll see that in a lot of your third party apps, there is the always option. And a lot of these apps have it on by default. You want to look for apps that have always right here and delete the always option. Ideally, you want to replace it by while using the app, or if you don't really trust that specific app, you want to tap on ask next time or when I share. Now, next up, also here on privacy and security, I want you to tap on tracking and turn all the apps that show up here off because there's no need for any of your apps to be tracking your activity across other companies, apps, or websites. That is just information you're giving them for free. It makes no sense. So turn all of the apps that show up here off. And well, also make sure that this right here is turned on. Allow apps to request to track. Now also here on privacy and security, if you swipe all the way to the bottom, you'll see an option called analytics and improvements. And well, this is essentially going to allow you to share specific data with Apple. You can share your iCloud analytics, you can share your Siri conversations, you can share your well, behavior around the phone. I generally suggest you turn all of these off because the way that I see it, I do not see them gifting you any free iCloud storage or any free pair of AirPods. So you should also not gift them your data for free. So turn all of these options off. And finally, right here, once again, on privacy and security, I want you to tap once again on location services and then tap on system services. In this case, you'll see a full list with every service from the phone that needs access to your location in real time or in the background. And well, of course, this is very personal. You can do whatever you want, but if you want to follow my advice and see what I do, ideally you want to turn all of these options off every single one of them. Don't worry, we can turn on uh, the ones we actually need later. So let's turn everything off. There we go. And then you want to turn on find my iPhone, compass calibration, emergency and SOS. You also want to turn on Apple Pay merchant identification, home accessories, satellite connection, motion calibration and distance, setting time zone, share my location, and finally, system customization, but everything else you want to turn it off. But anyways, that being said, I believe that is everything you need to turn off on your iOS 26 iPhone. If you have any questions regarding anything that I said in the video, please tell me down below in the comments. And if not, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you again very soon. Peace.